evening and welcome to the Good Friday Tenebrae service here at Servants. Tenebrae is, comes from the Latin word for darkness and tonight we will plunge into the darkness as we follow the advice that Pontius Pilate had when he spoke better than he knew and said, behold the man. And so this evening we'll behold Jesus and his work as we plunge into darkness with him and see at once the cost of our sin and the depth of his love. So we'll go one candle, one, re re one reading at a time as we go into to, to the deeper darkness before we exit in silence with the tension hanging until Easter morning. So please prepare yourself for a time of worship as we behold the man of Jesus. Please stand. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet yeah, we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yeah. 
Please stand. Let us remember Jesus, who though rich became poor and dwelt among us, who was mighty indeed, healing the sick, the sick and the troubled, who as a teacher to his disciples was their companion and servant. Let us remember Jesus who prayed for forgiveness of those who rejected him and for the perfecting of those who received him, who loved all people and prayed for them, even if they denied and rejected him, who hated sin because he knew the cost of pride and selfishness, of cruelty and hatred, both to people and to God. May we ever be grateful Jesus the Christ and what he has done for us. Let us remember Jesus who humbled himself obedient unto the cross. God has exalted him who has redeemed us from the bondage of sin and given us new freedom. May we ever be grateful for Jesus the Christ and what he has done and continues to do for us. Please be seated. Oh. 
first word, Luke 23, 26 through 34. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to, say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others were criminals who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Almighty God, to whom your crucified Son prayed for the forgiveness of those who did not know what they were doing, grant that we too may be included in that prayer. Whether we sin out of ignorance or intention, be merciful to us and grant us your acceptance and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our suffering Savior. Amen. Jesus, in thy dying woes, even while thy life blood flows, craving pardon for thy foes, hear us, holy Jesus. Say second word from Luke chapter 23 verse 35 through 43 and the people stood by watching but the ruler scoffed at him saying he saved others let him save himself if he is the Christ of God his chosen one the soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying if you were the king of the Jews save yourself there was also an inscription over him this is the king of the Jews one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, 
since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, in your agony you showed compassion to a man who recognized his sinfulness and your holiness. You gave him the gift of life eternal. We thank you for that same indescribable gift you give to us. Help us to show such compassion to the lost so that they may too dwell in paradise with you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Jesus pitying the sighs of the thief who near thee dies, promising him paradise, hear us, holy Jesus. The third word, John 19, 23 through 27. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lot for, lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. By, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. O blessed Savior, who in your hours of greatest suffering expressed compassion for your mother and made arrangements for her care, grant that we who seek to follow your example may show our concern for the needs of others, reaching out to provide for those who suffer in our human family. 
Hear this, our prayer, for your mercy's sake. Amen. Amen. Jesus, loving to the end, her whose heart thy sorrows rend, and thy dearest human friend, hear us, holy Jesus. May we in thy sorrow share for thy sake. fourth word in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 45 through 46. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? the end of this Tenebrae service, we will sing, Were You There? The old Negro spiritual, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? It's one of the most moving songs for me and this service and during this Good Friday. The answer is, of course, that we weren't there. But we come tonight to remember that day that Jesus hung upon the cross, having suffered the scorn and shame and the beatings and the mock trials and all the things that Jesus endured, the suffering, the torture, finally the execution, naked on a cross outside of Jerusalem. In the Jewish understanding the word remember is not simply meant that we think back on something that happened a long time ago. The word member, if you think about it, has, has, has a sense of being together, right? We are members of the body of Christ, for instance. There's a wholeness, there's a togetherness. And so in the Jewish understanding of that word, to remember is the opposite of dismember. It's to be connected once again so that we're not simply thinking back on the cross of Calvary, but we're reconnecting with the cross of Calvary and our Lord's death. 
Tonight, as we remember with the death of our Lord, our crucified God, we remember that Jesus' death, Jesus was willing to die on the cross to take our sins upon himself. He offers himself as the sin sacrifice for us, the perfect lamb of God who lays down his life for the sins of the world. Many in our time don't like the idea of being told they're a sinner or that they're a bad person or they're in need of being saved from themselves. But the reality is it's true. And even if we won't admit it, in the darkness of our own lives and the quiet and the isolation we know, we know all the times that we have done what we should not have done and left undone things we should have done. The first three words of these last seven words of Jesus, which is what we're commemorating tonight in the Tenebrae service, the last seven phrases, if you will, that Jesus said, the first three really point at Jesus' selflessness. And in contrast, they remind me of my great sin. Jesus is compassionate towards his enemies. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How quick I am to condemn my enemies and to criticize them and maybe even shout them to silence. And yet Jesus prays to the Father that the Father will have mercy on his enemies, those that have crucified him. From the cross, Jesus is also doing the work of evangelism. On the cross, two sinners, one to his left and one to his right, one mocking him, the other asking questions, seeking to know the one who's hanging beside him. And to him, Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Oh, aren't we thankful for the thief on the cross? For all those who make a deathbed confession of Jesus, for all those who languish their whole lives in sin and then at the last possible moment turn and cry out, my God, my God, have mercy on me. Jesus is doing the work of evangelism and he's doing the work of building the church. The third word is him looking down to to Mary and John, the the youngest uh, disciple, and saying to Mary, this is your son now, and to John, this is your mother. And yes, he's providing for his own mother, but he's also giving us a picture of how he refamilies us in the body of Christ. Some of us have families, but we aren't really connected to them. Or maybe they've already passed on into the afterlife. For some of us, we don't have families that we're connected to. But Jesus says, I have made you a part of a family. And he does that work even from the cross. The second thing we need to remember, remember tonight about the cross of Jesus is that Jesus not only takes our sin upon himself, but he also comes into our sin, our pain and our suffering, and he walks through it with us. Jesus from the cross, this fourth word that you just heard read, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Is the first line of Psalm 22 the suffering servant psalm of the sim, of the sum, of the sim, well i can't get that word out but the psalm about the suffering of a messiah and the psalmist goes on to say over and over again about how he's being tortured and attacked and pulled apart and beaten and stretched thin and that he's a worm and not a man and that he's surrounded by wild animals who want to tear him apart And his bones are exposed. And 
on and on the psalmist cries out, and surely Jesus was not simply quoting the first line of that psalm, but as, as a first century Jew, he was remembering all of the words of Psalm 22 that were ultimately about him. Jesus not only takes our sin upon him, but he, he steps down into our sin, our suffering, our pain, and he comes alongside us and says, you don't suffer alone. I am with you. But the greatest pain of the cross was not simply the human suffering Jesus underwent, although he was human and he did suffer every piece of it, but he's also crying out in the fullest fulfillment of that psalm, Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because in that moment, Jesus was contemplating being separated from the Father for the first and only time for all eternity. And to have known the oneness, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then to be willing to give that up even for a short period of time was the ultimate sacrifice of Christ for us. As he contemplates the separation from the Father. Jesus will cry out in the fifth word, I thirst. Jesus, who can bring water from rock, who is the living water. Jesus will enter into a place of need and suffering for us entering into the pain of our lives. Whatever you suffer through, I may not be able to relate, but Jesus does know how to. He enters the pain of your human existence and mine. And right now, as we pray for Ukraine, we pray for those suffering in the midst of war and destruction Jesus says to us on this Good Friday, I also enter that pain and that suffering. But lastly, we must remember, remember, reconnect tonight with the fact that when we look at the cross of Jesus Christ, we are looking at the completion of God's work of salvation. The sixth word will be, it is finished. Jesus says, by giving myself up on the cross, I complete the work of salvation. It is completed. There is nothing you can do to add anything to the work of Christ. And Jesus would remind us today that we need to stop working as if we somehow can earn anything to be more pleasing to the Lord. The work is done. The last, the seventh phrase or word, Jesus will cry out from the cross, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And Jesus is not saying my spirit's leaving but my body's staying behind. That's not what he's saying. He's saying with all that I am, I commit myself into your care. All that I am, I commit to you. And I go the way that you have planned. And he did it of his own free will. We cannot add anything to the work of salvation. But what we can do is say the same prayer that Jesus prayed. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Commit yourself tonight once again to remember the cross of Christ, our crucified Lord. Make Jesus' story your own story. 
because it is. Commit again your life to the one who gave his life for you. Jesus dies for our sins. He enters our pain and our suffering. And he completes the work of redemption. Look on the one who was crucified for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, who forsook your Son upon the cross, showing the world your judgment upon human sin and guilt, grant us, upon hearing his cry, the grace to know and believe that we will never be forsaken, that he is present with us even to the end of the age, for the sake of Jesus Christ, who bore our sins on the cross. Amen. The fifth word, John 19, 28 through 29. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. O blessed Savior, whose lips were dry and whose throat was parched, grant us the water of life that we who thirst after righteousness may find it quenched by your love and mercy, leading us to bring the same relief to others. Amen. Amen.
sixth word from the book of John, chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, who finish the work that you were sent to do. Enable us by your Holy Spirit to be faithful to our call. Grant us strength to bear our crosses and endure our sufferings, even unto death. Enable us to live and love so faithfully that we also become good news to the world, joining your witness, O Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen.
the seventh word, Luke 23, 44 through 49. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for the spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breast. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Father, into your hands your Son, Jesus Christ, commended his spirit. Grant that we too, following his example, may in all of life and at the moment of our death entrust our lives into your faithful hands of love. In the name of Jesus, who gave his life for all of us. Amen. Amen.
may depart in silence or stay and contemplate as long as you would like.